Hello everyone and welcome to Adobe Live APAC. Of course, before we start, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we live, create and learn on today, paying respects to elders past, present and emerging. Uh, we are here today for illustration stream. It's illustration month and it's going to be an interactive one. Um, so let us know. We'll ask you the drawing prompt of what kind of personal figure should we draw today? And of course, we are joined today by the wonderful Lillian Damono. How are you doing today, Lillian? Yeah, I'm good. How's everybody? I'm good all in here. And we've of course got Flynn helping us out behind the scenes and doing the chat mod today. Um, we also have Gareth already in the chat. Hello, Gareth. Um, let us all know uh, if you're tuning in or when you're tuning in, uh, where you're tuning in from, um, and be sure to give us those suggestions of what we should draw today but while chat lets us know um its suggestions uh lillian would you like to introduce yourself a little bit more well thing uh so i'm lillian i am based in melbourne and i'm an illustrator i've been working professionally in the field of uh, the creative industry since about 2004 uh, I started out as a motion graphics designer and then kind of transitioned into just doing style frames and illustration and no longer animating my own uh, drawings or illustrations since mm. about 2012. Mm. About, yeah. There you go. Uh, in the last three years or so, I've had a, a rep. Um, here in Melbourne, uh, Jackie Winter, and they have kind of opened up my work to other areas that I otherwise would not have had a contact with, like things like um, real estate, you know, government uh, apps, uh, a lot of tech startups. Um, previously, if it's when it was just me without any rep, um, most of my work is in the domain of animation. So I mm. still I still see that as kind of like my um, the majority of my work and my expertise is creating characters and style frames and illustration assets for animated videos. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'm, I'm very excited for the stream today. Um, and of course, Flynn, I'm sure we'll be posting through links to your portfolio and Jackie Winter and your socials as well. So people can check out more of your work. Um, looking in the chat though we do have well, we have one excellent suggestion from flynn uh which is to draw a tree surgeon um oh, wow. so that's interesting um and uh we were talking just before the stream um and i gave suggestion of botanist uh, but chat if you do have any suggestions of what we should draw today we are uh going to take uh take your input today um and of course if you have any questions uh for Lillian about what we're doing today about illustration her process uh, or just her work in general uh feel free to post that in the chat as well and we'll do our best to answer them but without further ado how about we um talk about the the ins and outs of uh, fresco so let's get started oh so um when I first started using Fresco, I have never actually drawn um, on actual glass before. I, I did not have a Cintiq or any sort of like display tablets. Mm. And it was because of Kyle, Kyle Webster, the yeah. person that created all the brushes. Mm. So he started posting things on his socials, things that he has made uh, out of Fresco. So I got intrigued and oh, Adobe has a new product called Fresco and just mm. decided to check it out. Um, so basically from there it kind of like opened me up to drawing in a way that i've never done before uh previously i've only just had like a, a tablet not a, not a display tablet it's just a, like a wacom tablet so mm. what i is not directly on the screen but what i draw gets mapped onto the screen so this is the first instance that i'm actually drawing on actual glass so the thing about fresco is it's it's a lot more um simplified compared to things like illustrator or photoshop for example mm. I'll, I'll take you through some of the basic setups um and kind of show you how to get started without getting too much into the uh, the nitty-gritty and the specifics of the different tools because you don't actually have to know a lot of things to get started drawing in fresco and i personally use it kind of like as a uh, substitute for an analog sketchbook mm. because of 
two things. Uh, the first one is because it has an undo button. Yes. Because it's digital. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, and the second thing is because I have a young child. And as uh, if you've tuned into my live stream before, it's because I still have to sleep next to him and have to mm. keep the room kind of pitch black. Um, so I typically kind of like just doodle on my um, iPad. Um, you know, at bedtime to just kind of like wind down and relax. So th- mm. this is kind of like something that I do on a daily basis. Mm. And uh, the thing about having it on a, a digital um, uh, product like this instead of like piece of paper is, of course, you don't have to turn on the light. Mm. But also, you know, you don't have to feel like you're going to make a mistake uh, because there's always the undo button, like I said, or you can just erase everything and start again. So um, this is how I start. Usually I would pick my canvas size here so i'm going to pick the current screen size as my canvas size which is slightly bigger than the hd um hd dimension of 1920 1020 mm-hmm. and depending on what I, I i do this for if i'm just doodling um in the middle of the night i don't like having the bright white screen because it's it's a little too hot so i would pick like a neutral color Nice. Yeah, I've, I I mean, maybe like a year or so ago, well, not a year ago, um, but I just introduced to the idea that if you're going to look at a stark screen, not only to protect your eyes, but also uh, Jeremy Lowe was mentioning in the previous session, just to see the colours better, to see how vibrant they are in comparison to each other. Um, but that's a r- great pro tip for whatever app you're using is to try to limit how bright and maybe... Mm sort of confronting the light is if you're going to be looking at a screen for longer yeah, than 20 minutes. It just gives you that eye strain. But you don't mm. have to, you can keep it where that's up to you. Mm. So to the left over here, um, you can't really see my cursor, but there's that pixel brush. Uh, this is the life brush, which I don't really use very often. Life as in like whatever you draw uh, actually like sort of interacts with previous things that you've put on the canvas before. Mm. But most of the time I either use the pixel brush there or the vector brush. The vector brush is infinitely scalable. Um, so you don't really have to worry about resolution. You can actually just keep going, blowing it up. Um, the eraser, that is the smudging tool that acts exactly like if you put any marks of pencils on paper mm. and you kind of smudge it uh, like this, just show it quickly. And then you just kind of like smudge it. So that's what it does. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that is the transform tool. I think I believe you have to have an object in order to transform it. <laughs> might help, yeah. <laughs> yep, it might help. Uh, this is the selection tool. So you can either select by using paint or just by drawing a lasso. Uh, a rectangle or an ellipse. I typically use the lasso because I can just do that. And then I can do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the paint bucket. You can kind of fill it in like that. Just yes, by dropping classic. it onto the canvas. Mm-hmm. And that is the popular, always necessary undo button. Mm-hmm. Um, this is different shapes, which I never use. That's the text tool, which I never use. Uh, and that is the eyedropper tool, which, you know, like if you have, for example, that's the, I'll just show you this. Photos, you can upload photos into, that's my two cats. Cute. It's very popular. <laughs> and then you can use the, you know, you can choose. So you can choose, you can see that that is this bit here. That is the color of what there you go. I can move. I can move the amazing and, and paint on top. Oh, I was gonna say we do, um, which we'll we'll dive into it uh, a bit more. But just a heads up that we have one more. Uh, actually two more suggestions maybe of what we can draw so um, what is it what is it tell me tell me (laughs) I will tell you (laughs) Uh, Janine um, would love to see something fairy related um, be it as a vibe or as an actual fairy Um, they love the flowy lines of your work okay and uh, Nick was also asking um, what is and isn't vector um, which we'll dive into 
um, especially in, in day two, but we can mention a little bit before we uh, start as well, I'm sure. I can just show you quickly. So basically, Pixel Brush, as the name suggests, everything is made up of pixel, which is like a little square um, of information. So if you zoom in, you can see how the image starts to break apart. Mm. That is a pixel image. Compare that to a vector. As you zoom in, it doesn't break apart at all. And you can see how the line, the edges of the black shapes is completely smooth. Mm. That is a vector image. Love it. A vector is created by mathematical algorithm in the computer. Um, so basically the computer is calculating you know all sorts of equations to make you have that line this is all mathematical equation and that's how it's plotted on the canvas mm. but the pixel is basically an image that is made up of tiny little squares like this of different intensity and darkness does that answer your question i hope that answers your question somewhat yes i i think that answers Nick's question perfectly. And Nick also has a suggestion for drawing. Mm -hmm. um, a wonderfully on theme one from May the 4th, which was earlier this week. Uh, and his suggestion is a stormtrooper doing a kickflip. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, although I love Star Wars, but it is not something that I, I draw to relax. I prefer like organic, um, you know, I have to check references in terms of mm. hours what the Stormtrooper armor would yeah. look like. So I think we'll go with a, a botanist fairy. Ooh, um, botanist fairy. I love yeah. that. So I'm going to start by showing you the brushes that we have available here. Um, you can see that I have lots and lots of different brushes here. <laughs> and there is a favorite panel. To make a brush a favorite, so for example, I'm just going to go with the default so Fresco comes with all these um, default stuff like recent, basic, charcoal, comics, dry media, FX, ink, lettering. But this, the, the, the sketching brush is the most basic, like really, really basic thing. And if you want something uh, to be your favorite, all you have to do is click that star icon. There you go. And then it would show up under your favorite <laughs> right there at the bottom. Um, if you want more brushes, you can always go discover new brushes mm -hmm. and this will bring up all the brushes that are available to you that Kyle has made. Yeah. A very fortunate thing in the creative industry because Kyle used to do this on his own and then he got bought by Adobe and now all this is available for free if you are an, an Adobe um, subscriber. Exactly. No, I, I think it's great. It's uh, probably the best... Uh, uh, version of our fairy tailors illustrators of of Kyle wanting to you know actually create brushes for Adobe and and being so so good at it and and now he creates brushes for us all the time. Actually, there's uh, just recently a new set came out the spring I believe spring 2022 yeah. and winter maybe. So I've been sort of messing about with those. And it's very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, like if you it, you know do this as a way to have fun you know like you you look through this and then you try different things you can try different things and then like favorite it uh, because mm -hmm. it would show up here under all and then you know whatever that you like you know say you find something under mega pack if that's the one you like you can just click the star and then it shows up under favorite but um yeah i'm just gonna use the sketching tool which is the pencil and mm -hmm. to have a new layer, you just click on this uh, icon with the plus sign, and that's mm -hmm. a new layer. So I want a new layer for my black and white artwork. And underneath that is the colored background. I'm just going to start drawing. Excellent. Um, and I will make a note as well. Of course, you can import other brushes as well. I believe that any brush that works in Photoshop will work in Fresco, um, but always double check 
double check on that. But yeah, I, I think I have countless, countless, countless uh, brushes and Kyle always brings out new ones all the time that I just feel like, oh, I have to use this now. This is my favorite. Um, but know that you can create fantastic work just with um, the simple hard round brush. Um, brushes don't make you uh, better or worse, I, I right. dare say, but it's what feels what feels fun to create with really, I think is um, the criteria um, that's most important. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I only have a handful of favorites there. You know, mm. there's not that many. You're better than me. I just favorite everything. <laughs> I actually have to <laughs> remove from my favorites is is more of a common occurrence for me um, in fresco. But that just uh, shows that uh, people can be different, and that's wonderful. <laughs> yes, exactly. But you know, I'm I'm also quite old, so uh, all jokes aside when you get older your brain kind of atrophies a little bit so you tend to stick to what you're most comfortable with um and yeah at, at this stage a pencil brush is kind of like all i need to start with a mm. to start you know plotting out my idea of what i want an illustration to be there we go yeah i will admit even though i have what feels like thousands of different brushes i only really use two or three um mm. <laughs> so maybe i i've just i've been old all along um but no <laughs> and also exactly old soul that's it <laughs> um but let me um ask you what what are you thinking about this piece we're a fairy botanist what are sort of ideas going through your mind right now so the first thing that I did there uh, is to pick a pose of what I want the the, the human humanoid fairy mm. character to to look like. So in this pose, uh, they are kind of hovering in air and they are using their hands delicately examining um, the certain part of a flower. Mm. And then the wings is roughly about that size. Um, now you know you can you can always you can always start much simpler this you can use that to control the opacity which is what i'm gonna do in order to show you and while you do that i just have to uh, repeat a comment here from the chat um from janie uh, i'm in awe with the speed you're drawing this it's clear the years of practice and yes. um i would agree as well Definitely. So you can start with this really basic um you know stick figure thing of where the joints are mm -hmm. you know you can use a doll like one of those art dolls to mm. help you determine exact limb positions mm. i should have one of those around here somewhere around. i think yeah they're very <laughs> useful um but yeah i mean uh, you don't have to do this step, but sometimes when I'm trying to draw a difficult pose, a pose that I'm not familiar with, I like to go back to basics because there's nothing quite like reminding yourself of the an anatomical um, makeup of the body. So mm. it, it stops yourself from putting things where they don't naturally go and it just lends um, believability to your image. So yeah, you, know, you can do that with the joints and stuff, or you don't have to. Yeah, I, I love the press of how illustration can be very much like, well, you could do it this way, but you could also do it this way. And then yeah. actually you could do it in a completely different way and ignore everything I've just said. Um, yeah. That really is what, what makes it so fun. Um, but we do have, um, Speaking of process, uh, a question from Flynn. Uh, do you ever draw from references or do you always just start drawing? Um, I used to, but I think there's something that's kind of freeing drawing from memory, mm -hmm. but also not just completely from memory. When I'm drawing these limbs, for example, I'm imagining that the tip of my pencil is touching let's say this fairy is made of uh, clay and there's actually <laughs> a physical version of them kind of hovering in front of me. I'm kind of imagining the tip of my pencil 
touching their legs, touching their form. So it's kind of like feeling, feeling. Yeah. So sensory memory, mm. not just a visual memory. It's also a sensory memory, which is something that um, every life drawing class worth their salt will encourage you to do. Mm. Develop that sensory memory as mm. well as the uh, visual memory. Yeah, very much that uh, volumetric drawing, uh, I think, is the approach of you're not just creating uh, flat lines, you're really capturing the sort of the, <laughs> I don't want to say like the mini shape, but really like the mini shapes um, of it all. And, uh, and yeah, another props just to life drawing is a great way to to learn more about how to pose and how anatomy works. Um, it's a great tip as well. Yeah. And uh, we, you mentioned a bit earlier about, you know, with, with stormtroopers or draw more organic stuff. And it, and it seems like you just like I have developed, you kind of develop a library of, okay, if I want to draw for, for comfort at the end of the day, or if I just want to scribble something down, you kind of have your go-to motifs and sort of themes. Um, yeah that you turn to and it seems definitely that um, sort of organic shapes and maybe, you know, florals and that kind of thing is, yeah. is in your wheelhouse. Yeah, that's right. Um, partly because I love gardening, mm. but also I think uh, as I get older, it kind of reminds me of my um, childhood exposure because I grew up in the tropics. I was born and raised in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So, you know, plants are humongous. Uh, I, I had a mango tree in the front yard and sometimes it would um, bleed this sap so it's got this really bulbous oh, wow. organic shape and then as a kid I would stand there and observing the massive ants that walk down and, and then the bark has all these kind of like almost like you know sores you know wound or like mm. uh, crusty old skin or something mm. so in terms of um, motives that I'm drawn to there's that organic um, fluidity that I've always been exposed to as a kid and mm. I think it's it stays mm. whatever you're, you're um, exposed to as a kid kind of stays for a very long time absolutely and that what what powerful imagery as well um, to use in your work uh, I think just as important as it is to look at examples uh, to inspire you of uh, illustrations and things like that just being aware of your surroundings and and going out into well me bias i would say going out into nature and looking at all the shapes and colors and the shadows and the light and everything like that but it really does lend to your work because you have a sense of reality and, and wonder as well in the work that you create but of course that's that's my preference as well you don't have to do that um and that's what makes it so good i'll switch to the vector brush now oh exciting to do the outline <gasps> or to kind of actually let's just start again and do you give yourself sort of to a certain point where okay yes i've sketched enough i know uh, what everything needs to be um, like how detailed will you generally make your sketches before you then go into vectorize the the shapes in the light bra I don't mm. really like planning <laughs> <laughs> um, also I think um, over the years I observed that things always kind of change so you know I tried not to lock everything in stone within the previous stage and just kind of see what happens. Mm. Yeah, For example, taking that changing, iterative approach. Yeah, I'm changing the shape of the hair again <laughs> and the chin because I'm not quite happy with that. I um, also feel that um, the the outcome is sort of dictated by the, the tool that I'm using. So if I'm sketching with the pencil tool, it feels very different than drawing with this vector brush tool. Mm. Draw it different again if I'm using the, for example, the, you know, um, ink. This is a pixel brush, but it's an ink. Ooh. 
yeah that's that's my kind of brush any sort of textured uh even like charcoal brush is is definitely my go-to yeah so it's, it's different again you know so if i'm drawing it with the ink the hair is different again indeed it is and that's okay you know because i'm doing it for myself <sighs> which is you know different than if you're doing something for a client because you can't go back on what you've sold them on mm. they will be questioning that like oh hang on we've already approved this other one why are you changing this again so yeah i like that as a way also of just embracing because usually you'll make a sketch and then you digitize the sketch and then like oh no it doesn't look anything at all like what i yeah. initially had done and it can be quite a disheartening experience um but just kind of approaching it from way of like well each stage will be different and yeah. just enjoying each separate stage um i think is is a really helpful way to to think about your work and actually um is related to a question we have uh once again for from janine in chat and everyone else please feel free to to throw in your questions as well about what we're doing or just illustration in general um but janine was asking how to continue drawing when you're stuck in the ugly stuff phase i feel so unmotivated to continue practicing illustration since i can't achieve similar results as my references or imagination oh the only way out is through mm. unfortunately um, one of the most value valuable um, advice i have been given by an artist who's far more accomplished than i am is to not worry about making ugly stuff mm. that's why you stick to cheap things like butcher's paper yeah uh, scraps of paper from the back of a, an old calendar if anybody still uses calendar or you know any anything you can lay your hands on don't get an expensive sketchbook no point um get whatever crap you know dodgy cheap things that you can get your hands on and just keep drawing and eventually it might take you longer than other people you compare yourself to but eventually you're going to get there which is another thing like try try not to compare hmm. with other people you can only compare to yourself um i was just saying this to my 5 year old as well the other day I said to him the only person you should compare yourself to is the same person you were last week mm are you reading better this week than last week you know then that's something to celebrate <laughs> don't compare yourself to i don't know isabel or luca or anthony in the class how how well they're reading that's not going to help you mm so that's my answer and believe me everybody's been there absolutely i look at the stuff i made 10 years ago and i cringe and that's a good thing because that means mm. you've you've gone forward you know you've improved so yeah absolutely such wonderful questions uh and answers today it's really the, the the cheesy goodness that i'm that i'm known for when i'm hosting is the like you can do it and um yeah just really embracing what you're doing today um and you know the the process of it all be afraid of the ugly stuff mm. ugly stuff is to be celebrated because that's how you improve yeah and it's it's different and then maybe that's how you come up or with a completely new idea or discover a completely new tool um i would even you know say that i think it's really important to deliberately make quote unquote like ugly stuff um yeah, yeah. because it just takes the pressure off of creating something that's closely uh related to perfect and you just get to enjoy the process and kind of laugh at how um perhaps how ugly or silly it is um and it just creates more positive uh, a more positive relationship to your work because it's fun um and not this relationship of oh it has to be a specific way um and if it doesn't look like how exactly i imagined it then it means it's a failure no it just means that it turned out different and you can you know 
try again with the next page in the, the sketchbook or the next piece of scrap paper or the next layer, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think one of my drawing teachers from high school, um, there was one time where she insisted we all draw with our less dominant hand. Mm. And uh, I was like, why, why are we doing this? This is stupid. Um, but now, now that I'm older, I finally understand why. It's because she was trying to kind of shake up that neurological connection between mm. your eye and your brain and your hand. Mm. And if you're feeling stuck, it's actually very freeing to, you know, because you can't really draw hanging upside down, for example. But if you can, uh, why not, right? Um, yeah, so just draw with your left hand if you're a right hand person or your right hand if you're a left hand person. If you're ambidextrous, maybe try drawing with your feet. Um, you know, it's it's just to shake things up. And mm. it kind of, after a while, you're like, okay, look, you know, it doesn't matter that it's ugly. But what matters is you're enjoying that sensation of your stuff, your the marks that you're making on the canvas. Excellent. We, um, um, have a reply again from uh, Janine, um, which they said, I sincerely feel like getting a new tattoo with the only way is through. So inspirational. Thank you so much. You filled me up with motivation again. And oh, uh, okay. Flynn in here saying illustrator and motivational speaker, Lillian Domono. Um, and I think it's true. <laughs> this, um, this stream, which we do have, I believe, 25 minutes left to go um has been great so far just full of great advice and great lines i think the only way is through the first time um i i was told that was in the really difficult dark days of having a newborn it was mm. so hard um, you know breastfeeding was an issue sleeping was an issue um, reflux there's all kinds of stuff and it's like you can't really do anything about it because it's not like you can get a refund on the baby. <laughs> you can't give it to someone else. It's your baby now, you know. Oh, whoops, too bad. You're stuck with it. So um, what are you going to do? You just, you just have to. Yeah, I mean, being a parent is is uh, has made me into a better person and a, a happier artist mm -hmm. because it, it's really humbling. There's nothing quite like dealing with um, a small child that, makes you feel like an absolute you know loser at the end of the day but the next day you got to get up and you got to start again and uh, i think that sort of process is really useful when you're an artist you know not being afraid mm. of hard work um and starting again from failure from complete and total failure mm. oh well tomorrow hopefully will be better yeah no i agree um uh, a dear, a dear friend of mine said that, you know, like today is just a day, which is very similar. You get through the day and then you're good and you do, do something different or try again the next day. Um, and I, and I think that's, that applies with everything can apply with illustration and just creative pursuits in general as well. Like you did your best today and today was just a day and tomorrow will be another day. Um, and you can try and do it again. So another thing I want to show everybody is this tool here. Ah, yes, the circle. The circle. So if I'm in the brush mode, holding it will turn it into eraser, but with the same setting as the brush. And under vector, if you hold it and then you move your finger a little bit on the outside so it turns into a bigger white circle, it trims your brush. Oops. Wrong layer. It trims your brush stroke so you can do that. Uh -huh. So intersecting things, <clears throat> it's taken away. Yeah, you and can make you such that? clean lines uh, yeah. with this. When I discovered this, which I think I discovered this year, to be honest, yeah, um, my mind was just blown away. I was like, "Whoa, never not using this ever again." Yeah, um, it's really it's useful. Great. 
And I think also maybe it's my version of, of Fresco, but you can also access these tools by just tapping once on, on the circle to... Yeah, you can place. change the setting of what that does. I see. I must have done that way, by way doing that. a long time ago. So under input, patch. There we go. You can customize that. So oh, you fantastic. can see all these things of like long press for eyedropper. If you press it long enough, it will turn into the eyedropper and you can change the setting. How, how long is long? Mm. Snap line is another one that I, I just discovered recently. Uh, so for example, if I'm, I'm just using my finger here, I'm making a layer. It becomes straight and then you can do that. Ooh. That's new. Oh, I'm going to have to experiment with that on the weekend. That yeah. is so cool. And of course, there's also, if you don't want to do that, there's also the, the ruler. Mm. Uh. Yeah, this one I use often. <laughs> you can do that. And they've also introduced now, so you have the ruler, which obviously is for straight lines, but there's now also, I believe, a circle and a square um, yes. that can help you create perfect. Yeah. Oh, and a polygon, of course, yeah. um, which is a, a great tool to use. Um, we do have another question, um, and it's also from the wonderful Annika. And congratulations, Annika, on becoming a, a CC ambassador. It's very, very exciting. Uh, but her question is, has Lillian experimented with a new manga or jitter vector brushes in Fresco? And what do they think about it? No, I have not actually. You have to tell me. Um, those of you who have experimented with it, tell me what it's like. I've actually dabbled just a little bit in um, the, the manga brush. So really mm. it is, is making um, kind of, it's become it becomes an in-between between the pixel brush and the vector brush where you just have that um the pressure sensitivity and it feels more like you're drawing with pixel brush but of course it's still vector and mm. it has that very specific aesthetic of what um you know inking for for manga might look like yeah um, okay. so it is really really cool uh, and a bit more organic uh, so definitely worth worth checking out um for you We'll do that. And another vector question again uh, from Nick. Can you edit Bezier points within the app? Sadly, no. You got to use Illustrator for that. But wow. we do have Illustrator for iPad. So if you want yes. to keep using uh, your tablet, you still can. Yes. Yeah. Um, sometimes I do my color blocking um, on the iPad. <laughs> for my artwork, for like client artwork in Illustrator, I'll do the color blocking on the iPad because uh, as, as, as much as the tool actually do work in um, on the iPad, mm. my muscle memory is all about the left hand shortcuts and the right hand editing the paths. So I prefer to do all my refining of vector stuff on the desktop computer. Mm. But yeah, it's about what you're used to. You might be more adaptable than I am. Uh, for example, like I, I can edit things on the iPad, but I just find it requires too much of like cognitive manipulation and like mm. reorienting that it's not it's not really uh, making me too happy. Yeah, I know. I'm actually very similar um, where Fresco has become my go to drawing or for digital drawing tool because it has so it is so simplified and streamlined that it really just makes me focus on the actual drawing as opposed to um, getting distracted by all the fancy buttons and and things like yeah. that in Photoshop. Um, that said, I am loving all the new tools um, that we are getting in Fresco. I think that's great. Um, lately, I've been playing around with the animation, so that's that's super fun. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's great to just have a, a drawing app, basically. Like I can just sit down and draw and do sort of mindful drawing or draw on a project or anything like that. And um, it's just going to be a good time. I, I really love it. Yeah, exactly. I think that's kind of what attracted me to it as well. Is like it 
it allows me to be as low fi as I want, you know, mm. and not worry too much. That's that's the beauty of this program. Is like it allows you to make things without knowing all the shortcuts and the the settings and all that sort of stuff, which, which can be really intimidating if you're not mm. tech minded. Absolutely. Like I'm not technically minded at all, but um, yeah, that's why I don't really muck around with all the advanced settings. <laughs> So I'm just using the, you can also do this. Parenting oh, alert. Yes. Clipping masks. Yes. I love these. <laughs> so how it just kind of nested onto mm. this layer. Yeah, I think clipping masks are honestly my, my preferred way of coloring. Um, because as you're, you're showing here, it uses the shape below to create um, kind of the exclusive zone where only your colors and, and line work and things like that will appear. So you basically create, uh, well, you create a mask um, and then you only are able to draw within that mask, which means um, that it can help you draw within the line. So it can also help you draw outside of them, of course. Um, but it's just a, a great way to keep things sort of a little bit more neat and organized and you don't have to um, draw lines or add color and then zoom in and sort of erase where they shouldn't be. You can just have it all clipped into the one uh, mask and it's it makes it so much easier. But of course, it all depends on, on your workflow and how you you approach things but i see that we are getting into color um what are your thoughts on on fairy botanist colors and i'm making it up really whoops <laughs> yeah this this tends to happen if the path like me using the paint bucket if it's not if the path isn't closed let's say i erase a little bit if i drop the paint bucket mm. the whole thing you know yes. it leaks out so <laughs> Oh, it leaks out. I love that. That's that's great. <laughs> creates unexpected results sometimes. Mm. Which Happy I also accidents. really like. Happy accidents. Exactly. And we do have about 13, 14 minutes left to go. So if um, we have any more questions, be sure to get them in um, before we wrap. But um, otherwise, we're just going to keep coloring this this wonderful fairy. And by the way, if you want to keep color consistent, you can have a look that all these things that you have used previously kind of show up. Mm. And as I, I build up my color, um, you know, different colors that I'm using for an illustration, it, it can be really interesting to see which way I'm thinking in terms mm. of the color scheme for a particular illustration. Uh, and yeah, it, it can affect what I'm going to choose next. Absolutely, it's, it could be interesting, you could see, you know, you're starting out colours with being very bright and vibrant and then suddenly something happens and it just whoosh goes into very, you know, dark and melancholy colours. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun to see sort of live also what your process uh, of the piece has been. Um, but speaking specifically of fairies, Flynn is wondering, does this one have a name? Do you want to give it a name? I'm happy also to ask the chat, see if the chat might have any suggestions for us. The chat. Yes. Then I shall. Chat, please let us know what you think this wonderful fairy botanist um, should be called. What should be their name? And we have a great comment also from Gareth. Uh, I'm loving the new mapping pen in the manga brushes. You can get some really fine lines with it very easily. So yeah, the pressure sensitivity I think is massive bonus to to the manga brushes for sure. Uh huh. And we we also have a name suggestion from Flynn already, Fayette, which is French Fayette. for little fairy. I do oh, quite like cool. that. 
<laughs> Annika saying, Flynn with the French, beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go fast in chat. Let's see. And uh, I have noticed a little bit throughout the stream that we are... Oh goodness me, sorry about that, that was my tummy. Um, that we do have music on, but sometimes the tracks are a little bit lower um, than others. So if you suddenly hear music and suddenly hear no music, that is that is just the wonders of streaming live. Um, but uh, we're keeping the, the good vibes going. <laughs> We say um, in our household to the kid, you get mm. what you get and you don't get upset. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that's if, you know, if live streaming had any philosophy, it would be that you get what you get. You get what you get, <laughs> you don't get upset. <laughs> no, it's funny, I, I was, before before we were streaming, I was hearing the Rosellas from, from Flynn's microphone and that's, that's when I knew it's going to be a good stream. And it has been a good stream, I dare say. <laughs> yeah, no technical issues so far, which is pretty good. It's, this could easily go very wrong. Sometimes mm. the internet in my area can be um, droppy. Oh no, mm. well, keeping our, our fingers crossed for the next, uh, next few minutes. Um, once again, if you have any suggestions for the uh the name of this wonderful fairy botanist please do let us know in chat uh, or if you have any absolute last minute questions as well for for lillian today do do let us know because we have i would say let's see definitely less than 10 minutes to go sometimes i also use the eraser brush as a brush yes love that there's really no no end to the possibilities of what what you can do so you can do whatever yeah Let's see, I'm, I'm trying to think of a name suggestion myself because I feel since Flynn uh, came up with such a great one, um, I have to, to meet, meet it in kind. Um, but I'm wondering... Hmm, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit with it for a while and see mm -hmm. if I can come up with something. <laughs> uh, Flynn is, is sending me a message in... Um, in the chat that we use uh, behind the scenes of uh, it's harder when you can't google it isn't it and yes indeed flynn it is having to come up with something alive when you can't google it but i'm sure i'll manage um because we do have i would say six minutes left the only thing that i want to warn you is if you use this nesting feature mm -hmm. i mean over here i'm using a pixel layer on top of a vector layer mm -hmm. But even if you have both layers as vectors, mm -hmm. and you merge it down like that, it becomes pixel. Oh, I see. So that's the only downside to it. Mm, yeah, that's good to keep in mind. Because I'm, I'm curious, because you can name your layers, I believe, in Fresco. Um, yeah. Which, to be honest, I, I don't tend to do and, and I, I think that's either. it's freeing because also you don't you never see the name so it's kind yeah. of um uh more maybe like a, a good luck charm to always name your layers um i don't even name my um my files in fresco <laughs> that's Everything next is level <laughs> take something because I, I was actually gonna ask like, when do you get to the point where like all right it's time to merge all these layers. We're done. Let's go. Um, but I realize then we. I don't bother. 
<laughs> with vectors though uh it does uh rasterize them so yeah it takes them from being vector to being uh, pixels so i suppose yeah. you wouldn't uh merge your layers i mean sometimes i do if things get too complicated and i want to tackle everything as a single layer thing to start making edits or whatever to start changing things sometimes mm. i do that but yeah it then becomes pixel yeah, absolutely. I just, I really enjoy the moment where it's just like, no, nah, this is it. I'm just going to merge it. Let's go. I'm committing to this. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, I think, oh no, it's still on. So I don't know why it's not. It was just refusing to. Oh. I'm not getting any sort of uh, feedback on this. Oh, no. oh, right. The tip is loose. Aha. That tends to be when I notice that my Apple Pencil isn't working. It's like, oh, shit, is the, is the tip Is it one? dead? Is it dead? Mm. Hello? Are you there? Like, is it me? Did I dead? do something? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. Just looking in the chat again, because we have less than five minutes left to go. So checking for any last, last, last minute questions. Uh, Gareth doesn't tend to name um, the layers, but he does tend to name the groups, which actually oh, right. I, might, yeah. I might try that out. That sounds useful um, to try at least once. Uh, Chris saying, very cool to see the process. Thank you for the stream. Uh, they also used to, again from Chris, they used to tell the kids when my son was in preschool, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Oh, okay. So that's that's another okay. version of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Annika, of course, coming in with the great tips that fresco naming can be useful for motion. Um, mm. And apologizing, I'm one of those hashtag name your layers. Um, it's okay. We're all, we're welcome to all. Um, but we yes. are just I mean, that's about the disclaimer, isn't it? If, you, if you're working with someone else and you are going to hand your file to someone yes. else to be worked on, then please, please, please name your layers. Otherwise, you're just making enemies left, right, and center. Yes. Please name and organize your layers. If you're working with anyone else, um, if not for yourself, do it for others. <laughs> layer one, layer two, layer three. Exactly. Null object 17. <laughs> I just had an idea like maybe I should just start naming my na naming my layers actual names. We'll, like, we'll have Gary, we'll have Priscilla, we'll have Tom. Joseph. Um, yeah, exactly. Just confuse everyone even more. Um, but with that in mind, I think we might have to call it here for now. Um, mm -hmm. This is only part one. This week we'll be back at same time, uh, same place. Same app on, on Thursday for more. Um, we'll be continuing to, to refine and sort of enrich this piece, you could say. But thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Everyone for joining us in the chat, uh, asking great questions, um, coming up with great suggestions and names. And of course, thank you, Lillian, for, for joining us today for a little um, sketch session. Um, thank you for having me. Fantastic. Cool. See you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And see you on Thursday. Bye-bye. <laughs>